Hi, I'm Sheridan. I'm the Engineering Development Manager for the Kinex Car Platform. The platform brings together all key technologies from both QNX as well as our strategic partners. This is an automotive hardened system that allows you out of the box to get to market much quicker than you would if you're trying to take these components individually. So now I'm going to walk through some of the different features of the Kinex Car Platform. So here we have an automotive infotainment system. Reference UI is implemented in QT5. As you can see, the performance of the HMI is quite responsive. Very quick screen transitions with no perceptible lag. You can go into various features, the map, navigation, multimedia screens, car settings, phone, application section. So performance is quite good. So first we'll take a look at some of the multimedia features. So we'll go into the media player. So multimedia is always a very critical feature in automotive and not only dealing with the different formats of media but also dealing with the different devices that you're going to want to bring into the vehicle, different formats of, of music uh, and different ways to get that in. First off is the embedded media player. So we've got access to jukebox where the media is uh, synchronized into traditional artist album genre or even just a full list of all the songs in the platform. And one of the key features is for automotive infotainment is bringing in removable media into the platform. So I've got a number of devices that we're going to bring in. So first we'll start with a USB stick. Insert it in. See how it's detected. We'll actually sync the media. So you can see by artist, album, genre, songs, And of course, need to be able to handle the use cases where the media is removed during playback. So stability, being able to reliably handle that use case is very critical for an automotive system. Of course, I reconnect it and we bring it back in again. So in this case, I've got an Android MTP device. So it's detected. I'm going to go in, access the media, we'll sync it. And similarly, if we pull this device while we're playing from it, we need to be able to recover gracefully. The other key feature that we need to handle is large media stores that are, that are brought in. So uh, if people are starting to bring in devices with one, two, three terabytes worth of media, you need to be able to access that quickly while also synchronizing that in the background. So you'll actually notice when we connect, you can't actually access the albums, artists, and genres right away, but you can access the folders. We're syncing in the background, and then once that sync is complete, you can actually go back and access a, a synced view. Now we can actually see artists and albums, songs. So again, being able to handle those, those use cases is uh, uh, extremely important. Uh, people, we don't want users having to wait for the media to sync. Now we can also support other types of devices. iPods are also very commonplace. And it's detected, synchronized, and again, we can access that media. And of course, again, we need to be very robust to that being removed. So we disconnect it and reconnect it. We need to be able to handle those, those use cases. So other types of broadband media, Bluetooth. So if we actually go and connect a Bluetooth phone. There we go, we're connected. Now actually see the Bluetooth device is also one of the media sources that we can access. Being able to concurrently access all these different types of media, being able to seamlessly switch between them, remove them, disconnect them, put them back in, are all very critical features of, of the platform for the stability and the robustness. So next we're gonna take a look at some of the voice commands that we can do with this platform. So first we can try some media commands. Play Bobo's Groove. And we've looked into the database of media for the voice command and able to bring up that, that track. Other things that we can do are control the navigation. So in this case, find Starbucks. And we're presented a list of POIs um, that match that, that search criteria. We can pick one of these ones. And 
and so our navigation is running. As you can see, we're actually sharing information to other screens, media, as well as turn by turn. And while navigation and media are going, the system is still quite responsive. They're able to access all the media, be able to uh, interact uh, quite seamlessly, quite easily with the platform. And also do other types of, of navigation searches. Find airport. And we can also support a one-shot navigation destination entry. Navigate to 100 King Street. And again, we get a list of matches. Top match plus a number of other potential matches. And we can select that. And we'll actually go in, we'll cancel the previous route, and we can automatically start up the next route in the system. So next we can also show the integration of the, the voice recognition with our hands-free phone calls. Call James. So again, the voice recognition, we're able to uh, do a contact lookup and we can call James. Now one of the other key features of the platform is our acoustic echo cancellation. So we're actually able to help out with the, the noise and echo of uh, the cabin experience to, to provide a, a very good, clean audio experience. We can also support doing direct digit dial via voice command. Dial 613-591-0836. Would you like me to call 613-591-0836? Yes. Dialing 613-591-0836. Thank you for calling QNX Software System. Because our customers want to implement different applications and using different technologies and be able to pick the, the best technology for the use case, we provide a very rich set of application uh, environments for, for them to choose from. Everything from native applications, Qt5 applications, HTML5 applications, as well as APK applications that would run on, say, an Android smartphone can be brought into the car. So if you take a look at a few of these, the first one would be a native application. In this case, it's simply a rear view camera application. And we can switch to a set of HTML5 applications. Here's an internet parking spot finder application. And it'll let us find a free parking spot within the vicinity. So the other thing we can show are our Qt5 applications. So the settings application is actually written in Qt5. This one has a number of different screens can flow through. So Bluetooth information for our currently connected Bluetooth device. And this allows us to, to search and pair with our phones. Software updates. I actually have a software update available that I can put into the system. This is through USB stick and it's automatically detected and you can apply the, the software update. This can also be pushed via over the air as well. Wired network for a um, uh, desktop uh, debugging environment. Wi-Fi client can be used if you want to set up your a smartphone as a Wi-Fi hotspot and the, provide internet connectivity to the vehicle through that. Or on the flip side, if your vehicle has a uh, LTE cellular connection, you can actually set up a hotspot uh, within the vehicle and have smartphones be able to connect to that. And another interesting feature that we can show is with audio management. So we've got a Pandora application want to show how that interacts with the native embedded multimedia. So if we start our media playback, then we can go to our Pandora application, which is an HTML5 app. We'll start that up. And you'll hear that the uh, embedded media player actually pause in the background when we start with the uh, Pandora internet radio. And then what will happen is if you actually switch back to the native embedded media player, start to play, you'll hear that the Pandora will actually 
pause. And then we go back to Pandora, the embedded media player will pause. So the audio management use cases are quite critical for um, automotive use cases with different media sources coming into the platform. And finally, we can also take a look at the uh, APK environment to run Android applications natively in the vehicle. Well, first, we can show just a simple API demos application. So this is one of the standard applications that comes with the, the Android SDK for, for software developers. And this just shows the various APIs that are supported in the platform. And there's actually some 18,000 tests that are actually part of the certification test that each one of these will actually represent. We actually run these on a continual basis to make sure that the Android applications taken from a smartphone are actually compatible and are going to be able to run inside the vehicle. So now what we can do is we can take a look at more real world uh, application that you would actually use with this. So we have an iHeartRadio application, which is an Android application taken from a smartphone. So again, this is showing how you can build in other types of applications from a smartphone into the vehicle. Next, we're going to take a look at projection mode technologies, which is becoming a very important trend in the automotive industry. So in this case, we're actually going to be showing a mirror link compatible device. And the projection mode technology actually allows the uh, smartphone that you bring into the car to actually start to control parts of the screen in the vehicle. So there we go, we detect the applications, we can select them, and so you get pretty much full access to all the features in the phone. In this case, we'll take a look at the media player. And again, every phone manufacturer is actually uh, responsible for choosing the driver experience and the UI experience that's presented to the customer. All right, so now we're going to take a look at yet another um, very important automotive feature, which are some of the last mode persistency features. So in this case, we're going to show last mode audio. So we have a media track session. So you see the full set of tracks that we're playing, the current track and its current position. And what will happen is when the vehicle is, is turned off and the user gets out, and eventually they return back, the expectation is the vehicle is going to come back to the same media, media playback that um, was left when the vehicle was, was turned off. So we're not hooked up to the ignition right now, so we'll just simulate that with our shutdown application. In this case, we're going to be saving the full state of the, of the system and we'll start to see some of the fast boot capabilities as well. So we see the fast camera, the audio chime. Now we start to hear the audio track session that was last playing, and then the user interface finally comes back up. So once the system is up, as you see, we're back at our same track session, and the media player is back up and running. The system is fully responsive, navigation is up and ready to go. So that just demonstrates last mode capabilities, as well as the uh, fast boot capabilities of the platform. All right, so we've uh, completed our walkthrough of all the various features of the King's Car platform, where we've been able to show a variety of technologies, both from QNX, as well as from our third-party partners, showing how they're all integrated into a, a complete software stack. Everything is pre-integrated, pre-tested, very robust. And really, this is going to allow you to uh, use this as a starting point where you can get to market and building your next generation infotainment system.